We know from our study of Scripture that God the Father is a God of law. In referring to our eventual destiny after this life in mortality, we are told in the Doctrine and Covenants section 88, Unto every kingdom is given a law, and unto every law there are certain bounds and conditions. In fact, we learn further from Scripture that the entire universe, as well as our own existence, is governed by law. Those conditions and bounds mentioned are often referred to as consequences, and as such, we clearly see that every law has associated consequences, and that these two principles are inseparably connected. If not so, as we are told in the words of Alma, neither justice nor mercy could exist. Both would be destroyed, and God would cease to be God. However, God is eternal, and exists without beginning or end. Therefore, law, consequence, justice, and mercy will never cease. When we follow the law by adhering to commandments, we are entitled to receive not only joy in this life, but also everlasting joy and eternal life with Father in the mansions prepared for us. Now, having lived in mortality, all come to quickly understand and recognize that mortal men and women are not perfect. Each and every one of us beyond the age of accountability has committed sin to some degree or other, and by so doing comes short of the glory of God. When a law is broken, the scale of life is out of balance, and justice demands payment. Recognizing God is a just being, the broken law cannot be overlooked, and just payment for a just law cannot be put aside. How, then, is payment to be exacted? Being endowed with agency, by choice we broke the law, and, in accordance with that same agency, we may choose to suffer the consequences alone until we have paid the uttermost farthing. On the other hand, through the divine love of our Savior Jesus Christ, mercy is afforded to all those who are willing to accept that love. At the conclusion of the Savior's mortal ministry, he walked for the last time up the gentle hillside to the Garden of Gethsemane and there fulfilled the will of the Father by taking upon himself all the suffering, sin, and sorrow of a fallen world, which suffering, as we read in the Doctrine and Covenants section 19, caused the greatest of all to tremble because of pain and to bleed at every pore, and to suffer both body and spirit, desiring not to drink the bitter cup. Nevertheless, glory be to the Father, he partook and finished his preparations unto the children of men. Certainly we stand all amazed at the love Jesus offers us. Again, in the words recorded in his 42nd chapter, Alma states, Thus we see that all mankind were fallen, and they were in the grasp of justice, yea, the justice of God, which consigned them forever to be cut off from his presence. And now... The plan of mercy could not be brought about except an atonement should be made. Therefore, God himself atoneth for the sins of the world, to bring about the plan of mercy, to appease the demands of justice, that God might be a perfect, just God, and a merciful God also. Indeed, it is through the mercy of a loving Father and his beloved Son that we may once again return home to that abode of peace and rest for which we all earnestly seek. In the words of the well-known gospel hymn, Softly and Tenderly, Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinner, come home. <laughs>